Shah Rukh Khan received the 2018 Crystal Award for his leadership in championing children's and women's rights in India. Shah Rukh Khan was born in Delhi, India. When his school teacher asked him what he wanted to be in the future, he said he would become a Bollywood star. Though his teacher tried to explain to him that his dream was unrealistic, his mother's response was, if Shah Rukh Khan says it will happen, it will happen. So the story goes. Today, with a following that runs into the billions and a series of films that speak of his tremendous talent and intense work, Shah Rukh Khan is an icon who entertains and inspires his fellow countrymen and women and who is loved by film audiences around the world across languages and cultures. Shah Rukh Khan has also been one of India's leading philanthropists. He has been instrumental in funding and launching several charitable causes in India. In October 2013, he founded the non-profit organization Mir Foundation, named after his beloved father, Mir Taj Mohammed Khan. It provides support to women who are victims of attacks and suffer major acid attacks and suffer major burn injuries. The foundation provides medical treatment, legal aid, vocational training, as well as rehabilitation and livelihood support. Shah Rukh Khan has also helped create specialized children's hospital wards and has supported childcare centers with free boarding for children undergoing cancer treatment. I would like to now to ask Shah Rukh Khan to join me on stage. I'm genuinely and deeply grateful for this honor. And it is indeed a privilege to be in the company of two phenomenal and extraordinary human beings and talent, Kate Blanchett and Sir Elton John. She's, of course, a lady who commands the wind. And you, sir, command the song of a billion hearts, including my own. So I'm really, really touched that I've been chosen between these two. <clears throat> Just a special request. Before you go, can I do a selfie? <laughs> now, there I've embarrassed my children. Actors are renowned narcissists. No matter how much we pretend not to believe in external beauty, we tend to be obsessed by it one way or another. And perhaps being surrounded by this obsession of beauty, a few years ago, I came across a lady who had been brutalized by an acid attack. And it kind of changed my line, life, or the perspective of it at least. To disfigure a woman by throwing acid on her face is to me one of the basest crudest acts of subjugation imaginable. At the source of it lies the view that a woman does not have the right to assert her choice, to say no to the advances of a man or a group of people. And yet each of the women I met, I found within them the courage to move on with their lives and to reject the idea of victimhood. What struck me most about them was this that what was done to them only made them braver and stronger and more able to free themselves to make the choices everyone around them was telling them they could not make, couldn't make, or should not make. <clears throat> From them, I have learned how courage can catalyze victimhood into heroism, how solidarity rather than charity enables the human will to overcome how equality is not a concept, but a truth that encompasses all living beings, and how the service of others is not a choice, of choice anymore for any of us. It is a duty that all of us must fulfill in the name of humankind. When I journeyed through the lives of these heroic women and children through the work of Mir Foundation, I experienced a complete reversal of perspective. I stumbled upon the truth that there are no benefactors and no beneficiaries between living beings anymore. There is just a vast pool of resources, natural, spiritual, economically, technologically, that everyone is equally entitled to, but only some have gained more access to it, either by accident, as in my case, 
or by design and talent and hard work, as in the case of all of you present here. Standing here before all of you who constitute perhaps the most powerful group of human beings in the world, dare I say that power is one of these perspectives we like to maintain a certain way. But power actually needs a complete reversal more than any other thing in the world today. I was sitting with my five-year-old son, babysitting him just before I came here, and suddenly he screamed, Papa, Papa, my eye went into my hair. Can you get my eye out of my hair? He didn't say, get my hair out of my eye, like we all believe they do. It's a bit like that when you have power, I think. You think things get in its way, but actually it's the power that is getting in the way. It gets in the way of universal access to resources because it seeks to control and enclose them. So we, the powerful, need to get out of the way, I think, to pick the barriers apart, the ones that give us names and races and colors and hierarchies. We need to get out of the way and into the work of breaking open access for each and everyone with a true sense of ourselves, not as more powerful or less privileged, but genuinely as equals. That is what I have learned from my beautifully scarred women. I'm grateful to these brave women and children who I work with for all that they have done for me, to the World Economic Forum and all of you present here today for recognizing their heroism by conferring this award and this reward upon me. Also, I want to thank my sister and my wife and my little daughter for bringing me up well and teaching me the value of requesting sometimes imploring, and if I may add, sometimes even begging a yes from a woman instead of forcing it upon her. Thank you so much, Professor Schwabs, for having me here. And thank you, Mr. Schwabs. Thank you, Davos. Namaskar and Jai Hind. Thank you.